A sharp increase in anomalous activity has been reported in the Death Valley National Park. More specifically, the source seems to be the Devil's Hole cave system. The cave is unmapped and was thought at first to only be around 500 feet deep and completely filled with water. However, a recent discovery suggests that the cave may be thousands of meters deep and only some of the caverns discovered were flooded. Natural physics suggests that all the caverns under the water source should be flooded as well. But for some reason, some of these caverns were empty and completely dry. Things came to a head when authorities noticed a recent uptick in missing people, both locals and tourists, traced to the Devil's Hole. At first, suspicions were that the people were getting lost. However, some of the individuals were locals that gave cave tours for a living. Another suspicion was inspired by the people of the cavern myth. The people of the cavern are rumored to be a small tribe of human-like beings claimed by locals to be responsible for the cultist insignias that line the mountains of Death Valley. This could make sense, as these same insignias were found in newly discovered caverns in the Devil's Hole. However, these people are thought to be an old wives' tale, held and spread by locals, perhaps to attract more tourist revenue. Despite the accusation, many locals remain staunch in their stance that the cave people exist. To find the cause of these missing people, the Death Valley Police Department has contacted a professional cave mapper, Maxwell Brodenberg, to shed light on what exactly is happening in the cave. In the attempted completed mapping of the Devil's Hole, new evidence would come to light, leading to the dismissal of the people of the cavern theory. While there was evidence of human habitation in many of the areas, there were no actual people seen, and there was no evidence that these were anything more than temporary homeless camps. As the mapper went deeper, he noted a smell of rot and decay that became stronger the further he voyaged into the cave. The deeper Maxwell went, the stranger that both the cave and the cultish insignias became. Maxwell noted that the layout of the cavern made no sense in a 3D space, often displaying impossible geometry. Some caverns that were thousands of feet deep would lead to spaces that were so close to the surface, one could see sunlight, and vice versa. Droplets shot upwards from stalagmites, creating puddles of water that collected on the ceiling as if gravity were reversed in only that spot. When he left that area and came back, it was flipped right side up. Sometimes he would walk from one cavern to another, only to be in the exact same room. Maxwell struggled to explain his findings to the authorities, but it helped that he had a digital camera and photographic evidence of many of the things that he claimed. After a week of mapping, he had made little progress in discovering the nature of the cave. On his seventh day exploring the cavern, Maxwell did not return. A search party was sent to find him after a few days. The search team was equipped with standard caving equipment, as well as a wired communication line directly to the surface team. While the physical line remained intact, communication from the search team went dark shortly after they were out of view. The search party reported similar anomalous happenings in the cave, and of the five members sent, only one returned. Even though communication was cut, the surviving member, Isaac Walters, claimed that he continued to converse with what he thought was the surface team throughout the expedition. He also claimed that the surface team gave some of his team members direct instruction to explore caverns in which they met their demise or disappeared. The only reason Isaac was able to find his way out of the cave was by following the phone cord. Isaac claimed to have found what he believes to be the remains of Maxwell Brodenberg. Isaac's report to authorities is as follows. There were only two of us left when I found the mapper, or what was left of him. His body looked deflated, like an old balloon, a juice pouch slurped dry, a deflated trash bag of a man that looked like his skin could be draped out like a yoga mat. When I approached his body, if you could even call it that, I saw that he had two large puncture wounds in his lower back, like someone had stuck metal pipes into him. His skeletal fingers loosely adorned with skin were wrapped around a digital camera. I took the camera and examined the contents. After doing so, I froze, not only because of what was on the camera, but because I had realized the body and the only other remaining member of my team were gone. The final photo taken on the digital camera is dated on the same day that Maxwell went missing. This is the photo. Holy guano! Some sort of anomalous cave system with unexplainable qualities that possibly contains a cult, but definitely contains a monster. Because the cave is utterly mind-bending, let's start simple and see what we can gauge about the spider. 
Evidently, this spider has intense photophobia, which means it's afraid of light and will react violently to any bright light source. If it wasn't planning on eating him already, that's probably why Maxwell ended up as some sort of used condom man. To find its prey, the creature has bioluminescent and photoreflective eyes. To be able to see in the cave, these eyes must be incredibly sensitive to all light, and this is likely the reason for the animal's photophobia in question. Like all spiders, this spider eats by locking the prey in place with its jaws, injecting a corrosive acid that dissolves the innards of the prey, and slurping the now jello-like insides out. The acid that it uses to dissolve the inside of its host reduces all but the bones to a slush, and for some reason, it leaves the skin intact as well. Another interesting thing, this spider's anatomy suggests that it actually may not be a spider at all. You see, this quote-unquote spider has a lot of features that look almost mammalian. For example, a typical spider foot looks like this. That was way cuter than I personally expected, and now I'm thinking about cute little spider paws. That's not what this guy has though, as his legs look like they end in some sort of horrible hand structure with clawed fingers. Looking closer at the beast, it's almost as if some of its features look not only mammalian, but distinctly human. The texture of its carapace resembles that of human skin closely, and if we look at this animal from a side view, we can tell that this spider's head has an almost human-like skull and jaw structure. Almost as if this creature was once a man, or a woman. Spider monster is legally required not to discriminate. While the concept of a man spider seems impossible, we have to remember that a lot of the shit reported in the cave seems impossible. My theory is that this cave is for some reason an anomalous hotspot. I mean, come on, it's named the Devil's Hole. It's not that far off. That preternatural beings and happenings are either attracted to or formed by this cave. This would explain the phenomena and layout within the cave, the myths of the strange cult spread by locals, and the spider being as well. The spider creature could be the remains of what used to be a missing person, somehow mangled by the cave into an otherworldly arachnid appearance. It could also be some sort of local fauna that evolved within the cave itself. If the rules of geometry and physics are different in the cave, it's possible that the laws of biology and evolution are different as well. This suggests that it's possible that this being evolved within the cave to hunt humans who became lost and trapped due to its confounding nature. It's impossible to completely understand the cave with the information found thus far, so if you want me to come back and examine more of the strange happenings in and around the Devil's Hole in Death Valley National Park, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe with all notifications enabled, or I'll throw you in the cave! I want to thank Dead Rex for drawing this spooky man spider. Shout out the inner circle, love y'all. Oh, <laughs>